Daf Yomi Tractate Bava Metzia, page 81a, top of the page with the words Ha Gemartiv Pe Aleph Amit Aleph. Um, this indicates that if the skilled laborer said only, I completed the work with it, he is considered a paid bailey, a Shomer Chinam. I'm sorry, a Shomer Sachar. Uh, in other words, even after he completes the work, the item remains within his responsibility. The Gemara rejects this line of reasoning. No, this is not what should be deduced from the Mishnah. Rather, the correct deduction is that one who says, give money first and then take what is yours is a paid bailey, the Shomer Sachar. The Gemara asks, but if that is the case, when one says only, I completed the work with it, what is the halacha? Is he considered an unpaid bailey? If so, rather than teaching a new halacha in the Mishnah, and all those who say, take what is yours and bring money, each of them is considered an unpaid bailey, let it teach us. Instead, the halacha of one who says, I completed the work, with it, and it can be deduced that all the more so is this the halacha if he says to him, take what is yours. The Gemara rejects this line of reasoning. The case of take what is yours must be taught explicitly. Tol es shalcha it's trichle, salka daita chamina. The Gemara rejects this line of reason. The case of take what is yours um, must be taught explicitly. Otherwise, it might enter your mind to say that once he issues this statement, he is not considered even an unpaid bailey and retains no responsibility whatsoever for the item. Therefore, the Mishnah teaches that even in this case, he is still considered an unpaid bailey and continues to bear certain responsibilities. There are those who say that there is a different version of this discussion. Rather than challenging that Rav Chizda's opinion is opposed by the ruling of the Mishnah, Rav Nachman Bar Papa said, We too learn a proof for Rav Chizda's statement from the Mishnah. And all those who say, take what is yours and bring money, each of them is considered an unpaid bailey. What? Is it not correct to say that the same is true when he says, I have completed the work with it? The Gemara rejects this claim. No. In the case of one who says, take what is yours, is different, as stated above, as one might think, that this statement frees the laborer of all responsibility. The Gemara cites a third version of this discussion. Hunamar bar maremar raised a contradiction between the Mishnayot before Ravina and resolved it himself. We learn in the Mishnah, and all those who say, take what is yours and bring money, each of them is considered an unpaid bailey. And apparently the same is true for one who said, I completed the work with it. And Hunabar Bar Maremar raises a contradiction from the aforementioned Mishnah. If the borrower said to the lender, send the animal to me, and he sent it to him, and it died on the way, the borrower is liable. And similarly, when he returns it, and he resolves this contradiction in accordance with that which Raphim Bar Papa said, that Rav Chizda said, they taught this halacha only when he returned it, during the period of his loan. But if he returns it after the period of his loan, he's exempt. 
a dilemma was raised from before the sage is when Rav Chizda said that a borrower who returned the item after the period of the loan is exempt, is he exempt only from the strict obligations of a borrower, but he remains liable as a paid bailey, or perhaps he is also not liable as a paid bailey? A Maymar said, it stands to reason that he is exempt as a borrower, but still liable as a paid bailey. As a Shomer Sachar. A Maymar's reasoning is that since he previously had benefit, he must provide benefit in return by safeguarding the item as a paid bailey until the item reaches the owner's possession. It is taught in a Brita and Tosefta Baba Batra 6 5 in accordance with the opinion of a Maymar with regard to one who takes vessels from an artisan's house to send them as a gift to his father-in-law's house. And he said to the artisan, if they accept them from me as a gift, I will give you the money for them. And if not, in other words, if they return the gift, I will give you money in accordance with the financial advantage I received from them. In other words, I will pay you the benefit that I accrued through their knowledge and I that I tried to send them a gift and an accident happened to the vessels and they were broken. If this incident occurred on their way to the recipient, the customer is liable. If they broke on the way back, he is exempt because he is like a paid bailey who is not liable for accidents. If this individual who pays for the financial advantage he received is considered a paid bailey. All the more so should this apply to a borrower who returned the item after the period of the loan, in accordance with the opinion of a Maymar, as he did not offer to pay anything. The Gemara relates there was a certain man who sold a donkey to another. The buyer said to him, I will bring it to such and such a place. If it is sold, well and good. And if not, I will return it to you. He went, and it was not sold. And on his way back, the donkey was injured in an accident. The case came before of Nachman, who deemed the buyer liable to pay. Rabba raised an objection to Nachman from the Brayta if an accident happened to the vessels on their way to the recipient. The customer is liable. If they broke on the way back, he is exempt because he is like a paid bailey. If so, why did you deem this buyer liable when the accident occurred on his return? If Nachman said to Rabbah that there is a difference between the cases as the way back of this one is considered like the way to the recipient. What is the reason for this? It is based on logical reasoning. Even on his way back, if he found an opportunity to sell the donkey, wouldn't he have sold it? Therefore, as he was in possession of the animal the entire time, the halacha treats his going and returning equally, and he retains the responsibility of a borrower until he actually returns the animal to its owner. The Mishnah teaches with regard to one who says to another, safeguard my property for me, and I will safeguard your property for you. Each of them is a paid bailey. The Gemara asks, but why is this the halacha? It is a case of safeguarding with the owners. There is a principle that a bailey is exempt from paying for the damage if the owner of the item is present with the bailey 
or in with with the Bailey or in his employ when he is safeguarding the item. Rav Papa said the Mishnah means that he said to him, "Safeguard my property for me today, and I will safeguard your property for you tomorrow." At the time of his safeguarding, the owner was not in the Bailey's employ. Tanurabanan. The sage is taught in a bride, to Sefta 7.10. If one said, safeguard my property for me, and I will safeguard your property for you, or lend money to me, and I will lend money to you, or safeguard my property for me, and I will lend money to you, or lend money to me, and I will safeguard your property for you, they all become paid baileys for each other. The Gemara asks... Why are they liable as paid baileys? Is this not a situation of safeguarding with the owners? Rav Papa again said, This is referring to a case where he said to him, Safeguard my property for me today, and I will safeguard your property for you tomorrow. The Gemara relates, There were certain ice plant dealers Hmm. Hanau Ahaloi. Ice plant. I never heard of that. Ice plant? There were certain ice plant dealers, and every day one of them would have to have a turn to bake for the group. One day, the others said to one of them, Go and bake for us. He said to them, Safeguard my cloak for me. Before he came back, they were negligent with it and it was stolen. They came for judgment before of Papa and he deemed them liable to pay for the cloak. The rabbis said to of Papa, Why did you deem them liable to pay? This is akin to a case of negligence by a bailey while he is with the owners as the owner of the cloak was baking for them at the time the cloak was stolen due to their negligence. Rev Papa was embarrassed over his apparent mistake. Ultimately, it was discovered that at that time, when the cloak was stolen, the cloak owner was drinking beer and not baking. The cloak owner was drinking beer and not baking. Since he was not doing work for them, this was not a case of safeguarding with the owner, and therefore Rav Papa's ruling was vindicated. He was drinking beer, and Rav Papa was a beer merchant. Maybe it was Rav Papa's beer. Who knows? The Gemara comments, this works out well according to the one who says, that in the case of negligence by a bailey, while he is with the owners, he is exempt. Due to that reason, Rav Papa was embarrassed. But according to the one who says that in a case of negligence, he is liable even while he is with the owners, why was Rav Papa embarrassed? Rather, this is what actually happened. That day was not his turn to bake. And they said to him, you go and bake for us. And he said to them, as payment for baking for you, when it's not my turn, safeguard my cloak. In other words, they were paid baileys. And now, just to continue the story, in 81b, before he came back, it was stolen. They came before a papa who deemed them liable to pay. The sages said to a papa, this is a case of safeguarding with the owners. Rav papa was embarrassed. Ultimately, it was discovered that at the time, the cloak owner was drinking beer and not baking, and therefore, this was not a case of safeguarding with the owners. And we'll continue on uh, 81B.